Threading your rifle's sporter barrel for a suppressor can be a problem. In this video, I'm gonna show you my solution. Kevin, you here from ultimateloader.com. What we've got here is a rifle that you've seen here on the channel multiple times. This is Guy Miner's 30 6 This is a Remington 700 CDL. Guy plans to take this to Africa. And the guide for this African hunt said, bring a rifle that's suppressor ready. And Guy thought to himself, well, I wanna use the 30 6 but it's got a sporter barrel. And the problem with the sporter barrel, this particular profile here is not really tapered and we don't have a whole lot of meat on the barrel as well. 5 8 24 would be 0.625 inches approximately on the threads. And what I'm showing here is we've got about 0.641. So that's less than 20 thousandths over our thread diameter. That's not nearly enough for a shoulder on either side. My plan is to provide a permanent shoulder that's gonna be Loctited on the barrel. My plan is to thread this back about double the length I normally do. I normally thread it back about 610, so it's gonna be 1.2 inches plus about 20 thousandths of an inch or so. I'm going to install a thread protector that's gonna leave half of the threads left for the threaded muzzle portion. I'm going to turn this down the diameter so that it's not quite as large in diameter, and then I'm going to profile it so that it has a taper so that I have a nice uh, transition between the end of the sporter barrel and this permanently affixed shoulder. This is gonna act kind of like a jam nut, but I'm gonna profile the actual shoulder portion, profile the outside diameter, and then the taper as well. Then I plan to spin on a thread protector and turn that down to the same diameter, and then I'll cold blue both. If things go as planned, we're gonna have a really nice looking profile with a great shoulder that's going to made up to our suppressor or a muzzle brake, whatever it is what we want to use for a muzzle accessory, all with a barrel that is normally not threadable. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to head over to the lathe, get this barrel dialed in, and we'll get to work. So I had a slight change of plans. It turns out Guy Miner came by the shop. Thank you, Guy, for coming by. Hey, you bet. I got to see some stuff I'd never seen before. Yes. Where we started at was, so Guy brought the rifle in. He had taken it apart. Uh, the trigger was still on the barrel to action. And with this Precision Matthews TL1660, I've got a over two inch bore. I can get that whole barrel to action inside the spindle if I don't have a trigger hanging off. So I removed the trigger. I installed the barrel to action in the lathe. I'm using the true bore alignment system from Straight Shot Gunsmithing. And typically, I would use the SSG range rod, but I didn't have the right size bushings for this. So I used an indicator. We went right inside the bore. We went kind of right near the muzzle, and then we went in about an inch and a half to get two different readings, adjusting the axial and radial adjustments until we were within about two ten thousandths of an inch, which is plenty good for a muzzle threading job. With a chamber threading job, I'm even a little bit more OCD about how we <laughs> get that put together. So I also drew up a bit of a diagram. I wanted to calculate exactly how long I needed to thread the tenon so that I had the thread protector screwed on and loctited in place, and then had about 610 thousandths of an inch of threaded muzzle total. To set up for the tenon turning operations, I used a couple quick tips with the DRO. If you get your tool against the end and zero out your Z, which is your lateral movement, now you know exactly where you're gonna be in terms of the length of the cut. And then for the diameter, I put the cutting tool right up against the surface of the barrel, and I typed in the number that I got from my micrometer, which was 0.655. Now I have a rough idea what my diameter will be. I think I took about five thousandths off with the first cut, did another measurement with the micrometer to see exactly where we were at without disrupting either the compound or the cross slide, typed the number back into the DRO. 6364. Now we're exactly on. Now we know exactly where we're at with those cuts. 
Was that where I saw all the finish disappearing off yeah. my rifle? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was that black, was that was silver. pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. Turned right down to bare metal. Very very uh, good contrast on that. And this uh, with the grooving operation, I did, did basically the same tricks with the DRO. Figure out where that grooving tool needs to be. Mm -hmm set it to zero right where we were down on that turned tenon area. And then I know I need to go down 55 thousandths of an inch on the diameter for that thread relief. We stop and then coat the entire tenon area with a die chem. Now we're ready to set up for and do our threading. Okay, so the threading is where the Zen really comes out. And so for this, I was basically using a visual indication on the peaks of the threads to know how deep that I needed to go. And then also I happen to know that this particular thread protector has a, a certain feel to it when it gets threaded on. And here I was using about five thousandths of an inch pass to begin with. And then I went to two and then I went to one. And then finally we ended up at one half thousandth. That's going to give you that last really nice, you know, cleanup pass. Compound is set at 29 degrees so that we're cutting mostly on one side, but also cleaning up incrementally that right hand side of the thread as well. I was impressed when we actually just <laughs> threaded it on, no problem. <laughs> like, hey, the magic worked. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we cut the, uh, the tenon and threaded the tenon about twice as long as it needed to be. Mm -hmm. The next step was to thread on a thread protector, just like this one, and to Loctite it in place. So this lock tightening the ring in place was actually pretty similar to that ultralight 6.5 PRC rifle build I showed you with the carbon barrel. I did pretty much the same thing. If you don't have a finished end on your barrel, you can basically cut it all the way back, cut the carbon, cut a shoulder on that, thread it excessively far, make a ring. It was 416 stainless in that case and then Loctite it in place and then profile it and you've got a nice shoulder. This is almost the same thing except we're just adding mass to the end of the barrel so that we have a good shoulder. So I put a bit of red Loctite on the threads where that thread protector was gonna sit. We spun it all the way to the shoulder. Not a very big shoulder, right? Not enough for a suppressor, no. hence doing this thread on shouldered feature. And uh, I tightened it with uh, some channel locks and at this point it's pretty much in place. We could have waited for it to cure slash dry, but we really didn't need to because the profiling operation, when those cuts are made, is gonna be just further tightening in it. It was very secure in place. Oh yeah, that's not going <laughs> anywhere. Yep, so we cut off the knurling and I kept cutting the diameter down until I looked at the shoulder and I saw, you know, that that looks like where we wanna be. And let's see, let's see where we ended up at. I haven't even taken this measurement yet. Looks like we're about 0.8 inches. We're a half thousandth off of that. So that's a really nice shoulder. It's going to be, give you a good contact between your brake or, you know, your suppressor and the barrel. That's what we were going after. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, 0 0.8. That's real close to a lot of different varmint type barrels. Mm -hmm. They're right around that neighborhood. Yep. And we have just as much mass as we need here. We have a nice transition. So after mm -hmm. we got the diameter where we wanted it to be, I set the compound over to 10 degrees. So if the compound is perfectly you know, parallel with the spindle, we're just 10 degrees back from that. That gives you this nice slope back here. Cut that to kind of match the profile of the barrel down to 0.655. And then we went on to uh, filing and sanding. Want to get that surface finish really nice. And it did look nice. Didn't oh it? man, it did. <laughs> it looked great. Yep. Yeah. And then that, that contributed to the bluing coming out real nice. Yeah, so we're just using cold bluing. This is super blue from Birchwood Casey. Uh, I used a Q-tip and used a couple different spindle speeds. I like to have the lathe running. You want to protect your ways because it's going to blue your ways if any drops of it or you know a little debris gets down there. You don't want that. So uh, we're using paper. Paper is safe around the lathe. Cloth is not. And uh, just ran the Q-tip on there. Got the got the threads real good. That'll help with corrosion. Not that you're going to have corrosion because you're going to keep them greased, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Good deal. So we, we increased the speed. I put a little bit of oil on a blue shop towel. 
uh, some of that Viper's Venom actually and kind of ran that over there at a high speed and that kind of polished it out and got it uniform, the actual, you know, surface of it. And uh, I didn't mention, we also profiled the, the shoulder. We did a cut before the bluing to get that shoulder perfectly, you know, perpendicular. So, you know, at this point, you know, we've dialed it in. It's, per it's running perfectly true with the bore, not the outside of the barrel, but the inside, right? The, the I would part, say that's the important part. The part that matters, <laughs> absolutely. Yep, we've got everything done. It's cold blued. We took it out of the lathe, and then we took it down to the industrial yard where we've got all the steel set up to shoot. think that is the quietest and softest kicking this <laughs> rifle has ever done you know you know I like to run full bore hunting loads through yep. it um, and and I did and we shot those and it was like this is nice yeah uh, yeah uh, made a real difference a little bit of POI shift it felt like our shots were down a little bit possibly yeah 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 so it'll be interesting to zero this out and see with the suppressor and without it you know where your shots are landing yeah, I, I have to get that down. And uh, interesting, I, I got uh, had a fellow that told me that he'd really appreciate if I brought a suppressed rifle on a hunt that I've got coming up. Yes. And that's what started all this. Uh, yep. So that's why we have a can on the end of my thirty out six. Yes. So as a teaser, guy's going to be going to Africa this summer. He's going to be taking down some awesome animals, and we're planning to bring you all some awesome content. And this is kind of the kickoff to all that, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, yeah, that cat's out of the bag now. Yep, yeah. really, really good stuff. Okay, so a couple other things. Uh, you all have heard here on the channel that we've got rifles.ultimatereloader.com. We're going to be doing some full custom builds, and we're also looking at doing gunsmithing for the general public. So if you're interested in this sporter barrel threading or other kinds of gunsmithing work for precision rifle, you're going to want to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on our wait list. That way you'll get updates as we start to roll out some of these services. Also, I'm excited to announce that I've just onboarded the Sonoran Desert Institute. Sonoran Desert Institute is an online accredited college. If you're looking for a way to take your hobby to the next level, Sonoran Desert Institute can help. Visit sdi.edu or call 480-999-4767 to learn more. Thank you, Guy, for bringing this rifle. This is an well, awesome project, man. Thank you for <laughs> turning the barrel, and uh, we got to play with the suppressor a little bit. That's good stuff. Good, it is good stuff. Yeah, now, okay, so for the comments section, what suppressor should Guy buy for hunting? That's the first question. The second question is, what did you think of this adaptation of a sporter barrel for a suppressor or a break? Did you like how this came out? And then, what are you shooting? Are you shooting a sporter rifle with a suppressor on it or a brake on it? Tell us about your setup. Thank you for watching. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.